So we have some time for questions. Uh, who has a question? Please raise your hand. Yeah, here. Since the spirit of your talk was questions, I thought I had this one for you. It goes back to the beginning part. You made the comment about bitcoins and the dollar. And you mentioned maybe if wages or other things were paid in MBS, that would make them more stable. I have in mind here, and it's quite related to QE, so uh, a good part of wages, at least for those with defined benefit plans, comes in the form of being paid future retirement benefits. You know, and uh, the effect of, in the long end, has big impact on the relative price of those benefits versus let's say current dollars. And so my question is that given the aging, given the enormous size of the cumulative retirement benefits, could it be that uh, retirement benefits just viewed as you know, a form of compensation? Could that make those long bonds like bitcoins? I mean, do you see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a very natural experiment, it seems to me, if I understood what you said. Why, why are they? Uh, well, I'm like getting it? paid, and I get paid so many dollars in wages, <coughs> and I get so many promises of income mm -hmm. when I'm age 62 for the rest of my life. And that's just as much part of my wages as current cash. So my wages are being denominated, at least in part, that way. When you, for example, vastly reduce interest rates, long rates, you increase that, the value of that thing in terms of current dollars enormously, as we've seen. So I was just <laughs> asking you, you know, you use bitcoins and dollars and then mention MBS. I'm saying something more realistic version. I'm just trying to understand your concept. No, 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 no. I see what this you is mean. huge around the world. That's why I was questioned. I see what you mean. And actually, I can't relate that to emerging markets where you have high inflation. So uh, what you see in, in emerging markets, which is a, you still think it's a useful laboratory because it's very extreme, is that people tend to index. You go into indexation, you change. You tend to, if you start playing those games, uh, you may give rise to uh, contracts that protect people for, for those movements. I mean, the world was not prepared for low interest rates, and I, I see your point, very low interest rates are actually hurting uh, people who, who were expecting certain amount of real goods or for their savings or uh, retirement. Uh, so th the moment that, I mean, the US has been a very stable country from that point of view, interest rates have been very stable. So the presumption that you were really saving in goods was, uh, was, was uh, uh, reasonable. <laughs> the, the, but if this uh, starts to become the new normal, where the policy maker is, uh, feels free that he can play with the interest rate uh, freely, that certainly that will be eventually factor in uh, the, the contracts and debilitate the dollar as a unit of account. And uh, so I think, uh, I mean, how that will take place, I don't know, but uh, but uh, precisely, that uh, can debilitate, debilitate the, uh, the, the dollar uh, going forward. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm concerned about uh, playing with the, with the interest rate, again, because the models that macroeconomists at least use are very simple-minded. Uh, it's an interest rate uh, on non-liquid assets, whereas the interest rate that we modify the interest rate on treasury bills and so on. So my way of thinking about it is that you put the bond in the utility function if you want to take a shortcut. And once you do that, then all kinds of things happen that do not follow from the standard model used by central banks. Uh, and in particular, you can have uh, investors that care about liquidity going to other assets uh, that are more attractive, uh, in, in particularly in emerging markets. So that's in addition to, to your question. I don't know if I answered it completely, but the, the playing with the interest rate, I think is, is something that uh, we have not thought through the consequences of that. Uh, there are some comments out there say, well, we do that uh, 
we might generate other bubbles. And, uh, and my answer is yes. I mean, if you start playing with your money, which is the anchor, uh, people don't, they, 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 they lose a, a, a reference point. How will they, I mean, the unit, the stable unit of account, both today and looking forward, the nominal interest rate of that unit of account, uh, starts uh, moving around, then it's like we don't know where we are standing. The whole system depends on that. So we don't know we, in which direction the, the market will go. And I'm sure, uh, Bob, you know more about your colleagues in the financial sector, I don't, but all of this volatility must be good news for lots of people because now you have new, new instruments to develop and so on. But not, you're not developing new instruments uh, uh, which are really going to be more useful, but you are developing new instruments because the monetary authority is uh, messing up the, uh, that's a possibility, messing up the, 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 the market for, uh, for, for dollars, for example. And uh, you, again, if you want to see that in practice, how it works, that's, that's how emerging market got in, into this trap of foreign exchange. Uh, so, the, so you lose, you, what, what appears to be a solution could be here, for example, if you don't want unemployment, then you have a big jump in the price level. So great, it's a solution, you solve the problem. Uh, but then the next step is that people know that uh, people get hurt and they stay away from the domestic money. It could happen with the, with, with, with the dollar uh, too. Thank you for this very stimulating paper. I think you gave us a lot of food for thinking, or may I say rethinking, <coughs> uh, some issues on which we had probably fixed uh, opinions already. What I liked most was your term, Mickey Mouse, for simplistic models from which indeed so dramatic consequences are taken, uh, which I don't find in the model. So uh, and I think this has led to a lot of confusion. Uh, so, I have so many questions, just one central question. When you started with the price theory of money, and uh, you put emphasis on the fact that uh, wages, uh, prices, uh, are nominated in nominal terms, which is euros or, or US dollars. So, and you said this is advanced thinking, that prices are set in that. So is the condition not that uh, you expect that prices, in wages, prices, tomorrow would, would be not so much different from today? Because if you would expect that prices denominated in dollars or euros could fall rapidly, I think this anchoring would not, would not work. I absolutely agree with you, and I'm, I'm glad you raised the question, because yeah, sometimes when I present these people Say, well, you mean that inflation doesn't matter? Now I have a, a strong anchor because people say the prices. No, 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 that's not what I mean. In fact, when you think through this carefully, one says, I mean, it's quite clear. If we had the model uh, where people choose the unit of account in which they are going to uh, make these uh, transactions and commitments, that uh, certainly inflation will matter and there will be a shift uh, from domestic to international money. You see that in emerging markets all the time. Even without going into foreign money, uh, people index, even today in Chile, which is a very stable country, the financial sector is still indexed to a unit of account, uh, to, to, to some CPI, say, uh, because of the long history of high inflation in the past. So when you do that, then your money is not a safe uh, haven anymore. And, uh, and then monetary policy begins to weaken because now what are you doing? You are not, if you increase money supply, uh, prices will go up. So they follow you. Uh, it's like having flexible prices and uh, so it becomes totally uh, ineffective. Um, so yeah, that's precisely. That's, that's why that's part of my concern too for those that come up with solutions that seem to be very clever now, 
to uh, lower the value of the debt, the real value of the debt, by increasing the rate of inflation. These, are, these considerations are not taken into account. And playing with, once again, the dollar is such a central <laughs> piece in this uh, process. <coughs> No, please. No. In order to spice up the discussions, uh, <laughs> <laughs> suppose the Greece exit the uh, euro, and uh, then you think uh, all these things can happen, like uh, say the new drachma becomes unit of account for a certain wage, and uh, inflation might help to reduce unemployment, and also currency substitution takes place. But also the, some of the job, nice job, may be denominated by euro wage contract, while the not so nice job may be denominated in new drachma. <laughs> so then you end up generating the real labor market, like uh, some market is protected from currency risk or inflation risk, so, and uh, and uh, more, but the other market is more real wages jumping up and down. So do you think something like that can happen? Or, or what's your predictions? Application yeah, well, of your theory to... Uh, <laughs> Michael, <laughs> we have an expert in the room. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the first problem, I mean, Greece is, is full of complications, because one complication is that they have a debt which is denominated in, in euro, and that doesn't go away unless you repudiate the debt, one thing. Uh, by using your own currency, uh, but again, if there are contracts, you have to repudiate uh, domestic contracts. Uh, that's very costly. I mean, the experience of Argentina in 2001 and two was precisely that, all kinds of contracts, even financial contracts. And uh, the, the, the credit market never recovered from them. Uh, so, uh, and if there was any advantage, was a big devaluation. So the big devaluation uh, brought in tourism and stuff like that. Now, having a dual labor market, one of which, some of which is in Europe and the other one is in drug mass, I don't, I don't know how practical that is, because you cannot have the same guys under the same roof. <coughs> I cannot imagine that they can coexist. So you will be creating maybe some tourism and new, new things, uh, new activities, which uh, we take time to develop too. So it's not gonna be the, like the simple model we lead you to think that the real wage falls and there is an adjustment. I doubt it that they can be carried out that way. Maybe we have time for one more question. If there's one more question. No, there's a question. Uh, you're very skeptical of inflation as uh, taking us out of the debt problem that has been accumulating here in the developing world and the emerging markets. So uh, what kind of solution do you see to get out of the debt problem that we have? <coughs> the, the, Brady, the Brady plan, that's what uh, developing countries did in the 1980s was a problem like this, there was a sudden stop, there was our indebtedness, it took uh, 10 years to try to get out of that, uh, to no success, and uh, finally the Brady plan just uh, uh, was a restructuring. Now, I, I don't think that's a practical thing for Europe, unfortunately, because the debts of those countries was vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the rest of the world, not part of their own uh, union, like in here. But uh, without solving the over-indebtedness or, uh, <coughs> or 
uh, having banks um, show the real balance sheet and having real bankruptcies. Uh, that, of course, they are costly. Uh, I think the situation then takes a long time to be resolved. I don't, I don't see, uh, unfortunately, I can, I, I'm not optimistic about uh, uh, QE here because I see the problem being a problem of over-indebtedness. And um, so but with QE, you may very indirectly <coughs> do a bit of that, but in the meantime, you may uh, end up generating uh, more inflation, which could be part of the solution, but I don't think that that is sustainable under the current, I mean, you know better than me, but uh, the ECB building will be closed for lack of uh, uh, expertise. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so, no, I think it's a complicated matter, and, uh, but without solving the, the, the debt overhang, uh, it seems to me, my humble opinion, that uh, it will be take a lot, a lot of time. <coughs> yes, um, so um, thanks a lot for these stimulating discussions. Uh, I have to personally say I could go on for another two hours, but uh, unfortunately time is up. So thank you very much to Nobuki Yutaki and Guillermo Calvo. <laughs>